stuck you up inside. And you're inside, inside this room, still bathed in that green light. Kind of eerie. And, and so, you're in there, and, and you look around, you're laying on a metal table. You know, and uh, you see these eyeglasses, you know, you pick them up out of curiosity and put them on. And you look around the room, you look around on the floor, and you're surrounded by millions of microscopic people. Ho, 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 ho. Yes, green people. Ho, 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 ho. All with purple hair, 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 hair. And, you know, one piece zip up. Uh, orange suit there, and they're all looking up at you, smiling, yeah, and then you hear this voice inside your head that says, welcome, yes, we wish to study you, 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 we really like to study you and take you back to our planet, zip car, 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 but, if you do not wish to come with us, 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 we will return you back to where you were, 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 with no memory of this, 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 this. So you think about it, you know, for a few seconds, and you agree. Yeah, you're going to go with us, so ship goes up. Yeah, and you go to Zep car, 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 and they study you and, and you become, you're not only the biggest thing on the planet, you're just totally big and important. <laughs> and you have no intention of going back to the L, 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 L again, 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 again.
Yeah, I'd like to make everyone's imagination. To put you all in the body in a the body of a writer. Writer, 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 Yeah. It's 1980, and you're there in front of your typewriter, manual typewriter, and you put your paper in there, and you got a deadline that you're trying to make. You have to have a novel done within the next three days, something you've been putting on for a while. Jug underneath the sink. <coughs> it's real cheap stuff. Screws out here. <laughs> Jug wine. <laughs> yeah. And then you think like, need something a little more inspiration. You can turn up the music. Yeah, a little bit. And uh, you go over there and you find that joint. Actually, it's just half. It's about it's just a uh, little roach egg, you go and grab it, light up, turn the music up even more. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> in through the window. A <laughs> sea fly comes in. You're trying to get rid of the jewel of a, a magazine. <laughs> you're trying to get your trash in your whole place. <laughs> this isn't working. <laughs> so you get out a can of kill em. <laughs> You don't know if it got you got hit or it definitely got you though. <laughs> and you just stuff put it away. Oh man. Last right on the TV. Take a little bit of your index finger. Turn down the music one more time. Land on an H key. And then it goes to the and then it goes to the You suddenly come to the realization 
this is the best fucking shit you've ever written. Eh? So you go over the window, <laughs> beg the little guy to come back, but to no avail. This is where reality gets in. <laughs>
Yeah, let's take everyone's imagination and put you in another universe or Earth, 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 Earth. Yes, it's half, half fantasy. You know, half, uh, what was the last one? It's sci fi. The last one was fantasy, right? So this time it's sci fi. And what? What other thing would it be? What other universe would you like to go to? A ceaseless one? No, that won't work. How about you, sir? Underwater? I'm sorry, what? Underwater. Oh, underwater. Underwater. Okay. Underwater. It's a sci-fi underwater dimension. Underwater city. And you go in and your boss says, You're gonna leak, little <laughs> You thought you had a little more time, but it took you a little longer to swim there than usual. And uh, this is a nice time you've been late in a row. <laughs> So you're fired, you're out of the job, and you're looking around for a job, place to place, you know, you, you take the, the underwater subway there. You get off, and you swim over to a building, and there's a paper, there's a form you're supposed to fill out that's floating around in midair. Grab it. And you have a, a waterproof pen to fill it out. It's kind of floating around there. You're doing the best you can. Thanks a little bit. We'll call you later, Lily. And you just get more of this runaround stuff. And you just don't know where to go. And then you get really hungry too, because you run out of money and everything. And and then you see a rather large fish. And you have your spear gun with you, but it's not an ordinary spear gun. No, it's an atomic spear gun. And there's a big, it's a big whale, big blue whale coming at you. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And you fire it. <laughs> and there's just all kinds of blood and guts and all this stuff over there. And you get arrested because. Well, blue whales are out of season. <laughs> you're in jail. <laughs> and you're eating just fish there, but you're eating
let's hear it one more time for our Dr. Dream. Right. By the way, her first name was Gigi. People come up and say, Doc, I've got something wrong with my back. <laughs> so you can see over the years, uh, people walk up to me and say, who's your feature? And I say, Dr. Dream. And they say, well, what does she do? And I go, uh, how the hell do you describe that? So I came up with the term sonic imaginorium. It's the only thing I think that really fits. So let's hear it one more time for her. And let's ask her, I have asked her to do something very special. You've heard her tell stories and do sound effects. I want to show you what a really brilliant musician she is. Ladies and gentlemen, Encore. 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 Well, once again, I'd like to take everyone's imagination and take you back to the year 1959. Yes, you're at Woodstock. Stock, 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 stock. There's at least 300, 500,000 people there, and you're watching the last act take the stage and go through his number numbers and it's a man by the name of maybe some of you have heard of him by the name of Mr. Jimi Hendrix. <laughs> Jimi Hendrix. And he's going into his last number for the evening. <laughs> Showing up that would like to be put on the docket at the moment. Howard. <laughs> no, okay, so uh, we have two new people and uh, uh, Debbie? 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 Like Devin. Debbie. Okay. And Zora? Zoraya. 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 That R Y A. I have to spell it phonetically. <laughs> Okay, now I got the name. So here's what we'll do. I will call your name. You will come up to the stage. There are two house guitars, a classic, and they 
um, country western, you can choose whichever. There's uh, picks here, there's a tuner, and there's a capo if you need it. Um, you can play two songs. You'll have a maximum of 10 minutes. So if you play one 14 minute song, you will be cut three quarters of the way through. If you get too close to the time limit, I'll start giving you a countdown so you can cut, cut whatever you need to cut, okay? Usually two songs does it because the song's about three to four minutes. So if you do two songs. The other thing we ask is that you tune up and get ready, I'll come up and I'll say, you're up next. And that's not the time to go get a hamburger down the block. That's the time to tune up or get ready. You can go outside and tune up or go back into the bathroom. It's a really nice little place to tune up. Uh, do whatever you need to do, but do not disturb the person that's performing, okay? We have three rules to keep some civility around here, and unfortunately, I've had to add a fourth rule. The fourth rule is, if there's anybody on here who has signed up that is not here, sorry, doesn't work that way. You can't come in and sign up a whole crap load of your friends and then call them on the phone and tell them what time they're on. That's my job, okay? And we don't flow that way. I don't go by the the order of the list. What I try to do is bring up a regular who's here, then I'll bring up a new person, and then a regular and a new person, and that way you'll get intersparse between people who give you a little confidence and warm up the audience and have been here. Okay? Uh, three rules. Rule number one, please shut the fuck up. I mean that with all the sincerity and love in my heart. Please, while somebody's up here performing, listen to them. Give them your attention. Listen with intent, because what happens is that gives a tremendous amount of emotional support for the person who's up here. And if there are new people and have never been here or have never done this before, and we've started more new people here who have gone on to become professionals who you're now paying money to see, because we have this atmosphere which we try to create my living room, and we try to keep it that comfortable. So we want to listen to the artist and hear what they have to say. It's also going out live on the internet, streaming as we speak, and it will be, is being recorded, and it will then be posted. It stays on a place called Ustream, and the URL is right up there. You type that in, and it will come to this place live every Thursday night if you want to come and join us. Uh, you could be at home. It comes up on mobile phones now. If you uh, are interested in poetry on Wednesday night, there is a poetry group that meets here every Wednesday. They've been meeting here since 1972. It is the longest running open mic poetry in the city. We started in 1973. We're the longest running acoustic mic here in the city. And so we're proud of that, okay? Second rule, please do not play along with the person that's up on the stage. Again, give them your attention. If they try to inspire you to start singing and playing along, please go with it but don't interfere with their performance. We've actually had people who play better than the persons up here, and then what they do is they just trip up the person. So please don't do that, or in between sets. And to me, the third rule is the most important. If you hear something you do not like, or do not understand, smile and applaud anyway. It's called good manners, okay? So, I'd like to bring up to the stage one of my good buddies who, uh, Rainbow? Yeah. Rainbow is one of my good friends. Now, when I started this, way, 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 way back when, I stayed here for like about four weeks all by myself, entertaining myself. And then the first person that walked through the door was this gentleman, Rainbow, and I said, oh, now we have an open mic. He has had the best attendance of any human being, and I'd like to share his bluesy, heartfelt feelings. Ladies and gentlemen, Rainbow. Well, I wanted to do something a little different today. So I have a couple of songs. This first one is called uh, From Life's Dream to Wisdom. So there you have it. Where God sent, save it. And there you are, and here am I. Soldiers of love we are, ready to die. And yet, are we not weakened by the strain of our pain, by some life's dream awakened, 
driven by some insidious urgency in our heart. I know part of me is the one crying out like a babe in the dark, doing my part in life's movie. So far, it's all been really groovy. When I went outside, I couldn't help but notice life was all around, up and down the town. Then, when I just about to see, I look, and everything is me. I don't presume to know you, but to ourselves be true. Sometimes I must implore a fix pounding upon heaven's door from some avenue deep inside my devilish skin, screaming from this rotting skin. I'm coming from within. Shall I see? I hope there is hope for me. Should this breath I live without, for me, no, there is yet the name sun about. But I've often wondered, can even pain, can even death, bring an end to pain? I mean, this one called. So yeah. And this one's um, called There Is No Room in My Tomb. There's no room in my tomb, I'm smothered in gloom. What hope do I have in this place? Will I live or shall I be destroyed, fired or employed, entombed in my hollow grave? Oh, pray tell, what is this ungodly hell? What love to speak of, and where can it be this radiant joy, ravaged with age from behind my body cave, imprisoned in my cell, dark thoughts scatter like crows to the north wind? What do you think I know upon my lonesome journey to the soul? What is my secret goal? Should this life prove to have been in vain, what did I ever hope to gain? My life, my love, and pain. What is it but of this little substance of the wind I see from behind the these mortal eyes my spirit wants to lie. This peace is to all merciful rest. Should I not find it in my life, could it ever be in death? This world is not my home. Forever shall I roam. This world is not my home. From a numerous body, life blood must fill. While well, waiting mouths are open, wanting to be filled. For as long as this suffering remains, then for me it is the same.